Welcome everyone to another episode of Tutorial Tuesday. It's week 18, 2020. I'm so glad that you're along with us and I'm glad that you're tuning in. Thank you. Um, this Tutorial Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about some serious stuff that has to do with dishonesty, deceitfulness. Um, but first, I wanna to say to everyone that has put money down with 70 Saddle Shop, my heart goes out to you. Uh, my wife and I are also in the same boat. We walked away from a saddle that he owed us. Um, if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, swipe over, read this article from Jim over at Lonesome Lands and share it. So you may ask yourself, what actually is going on? Well, what we've seen through a Facebook group uh, that's been put up by Sophia and Rachel is um, there's a pattern with 70 Saddle Shop where they have taken money and then not delivered on a product. And when the person wants their money back, they say they have a non-refundable clause and then they block them and delete them off of social media. Now, um, all social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff for 70 are gone and people are in a place where they can't get their money back. But there is law enforcement involved and we're hoping for meaningful resolution. Great question to start us off. Um, the first thing that I would tell you is this, um, consider the amount of liability that you wanna be under with your business. And what I mean by that is filing paperwork for an LLC will provide you some protection. The next thing that you'll wanna do is either go online and uh, buy some canned um, uh, model releases, property releases, and, and things like that, or have an attorney review your documentation as well. And also the dreaded, make sure you set up your sales tax with your local uh, jurisdiction, so your local states, um, you will need a sales tax ID. So make sure you look into that. Thanks for this question relating to editing. Um, to be quite honest with you, I would say that less than 20, maybe 15% of my images, I sharpen in Photoshop. But when I do, this is how I do it. When I do use Photoshop to sharpen an image, I'll use a high pass filter on a separate layer. And that range is from like 1.5 to maybe 2.5, depending on the image. And then I change the blend mode to hard light. Once I've done that and changed the blend mode to hard light, then I invert the layer and I use a uh, white brush to paint that uh, sharpness back in where I want it on the subject. Really great and deep question here. Thank you for asking it. Um, first and foremost, the motivation behind changing your style, I believe should never come from trying to keep up with industry standards. In fact, photography, painting, um, sculpting, leatherwork, whatever, whatever craft you're in, whatever art that you're in, I believe should be a true and authentic expression of your artistic vision. And that is done through a variety of different ways, um, you know, from painting to photography. Some people like low key images and some people like high key images. I prefer low key images, but that's certainly not because of some trend in the photography industry. Now, all of that said, and my comments are directed towards the motivation behind changing, um, if you haven't tried low key photography or you haven't tried high key photography, look those up and give them a shot. You might like them, heck, you might not. Um, I can tell you that for a long period of time there in the wedding industry, there seemed to be a very high key trend. I wasn't shooting like that at all. In fact, I primarily just shoot what comes to mind and what comes to mind for me really speaks to that lower key imagery. There's a few Tutorial Tuesdays where I've actually made a call out to previous participants of my workshop to tell others what they're like when I get this kind of question. But let me go over just a few topics that I cover. A few of those topics that I cover, as most do, and that's lighting, composition, editing, exposure. And I walk you through how I apply each of those when I go out on location to get those images. Now, those are some of the you know, most popular topics that people go over, and I certainly uh, wouldn't do a workshop without them, but I also go over these. The creative process that I go through, number one, also business and social media. So while those uh, previous six topics or seven topics are important, 
The one thing in my workshops that I believe is different among all the rest is the connection with the people and the relationships.